at that point a lot of our rides were in chappals yeah 100 kilo, i mean i see pictures and i'm like what the hell is that <laughs> like i'm wearing some shorts and like some random stuff and you know you have this five guys not looking like cyclists at all <laughs> everyone's done us you know 180 km ride and come back you know yeah. so all of us got chucked out of this yeah and chucked out as they said please don't talk about cycling here <laughs> so we said okay screw this like let's go you know set up something for cycling and we set up something called bangalore bikers club which is still active today yeah yeah very you know yeah it's very active right it's got like some 7000 or i don't know how many people are there right now yeah. he's like why did you guys set up shop and we thought he was crazy mm. like who wants to set up a bicycle store yeah right so so those were the beginning uh, you know that's where the entire concept got seeded you know so yeah. it was more of like uh, not wanting to run a business it was wanting to create change it was wanting to have fun out there yeah. it, it was wanting to support and create more riding so that's the kind of dna that we got built up for us you know okay. all by chance not by intention yeah it's just purely by chance you know hi my name is rohan uh, i'm the founder and owner of bums on the saddle uh, i'm going to be spending some time talking about my journey about cycling uh, over the last 14 years uh, as bums on the saddle I'm going to be talking with uh, Venki, uh, the Working Athlete Podcast, just uh, sharing what an exciting journey cycling has in India over the last 14 years. I am Venki Venki, and this is the Working Athlete Podcast. Here we talk to working athletes from all walks of life and experts from various fields to provide you with inspiration. training tips time management and lifestyle advice today we are talking to rohan rohan kini of bumps and sad right so rohan welcome to the working Thank you. podcast thanks for having me here super exciting yes now uh, rohan let's start with the obvious question you started cycling what 14 years ago yeah 14 15 years back we started cycling after like all our childhood you know we started cycling about 14 years 15 years back okay so how how did that happen what wow. yeah uh, it's quite interesting i mean uh, like like most of us you know uh, there's something that gets us into the cycling journey right for me there was actually the the frustration of traffic while going to work every day you know and uh, i was stuck in this one and a half hour traffic jam and uh, this is 2005 long time back 2005 yeah this is before facebook yeah a lot of the audience here must be kids i don't know like this is really long time <laughs> back and uh, you know work was uh, it's a 12 km uh, you know distance and it used to take me one and a half hours every day you know and used to be traffic jams and i tried everything and uh, one of my friends said why don't you try cycling to work and i said okay like let's give it a shot and uh, i hadn't touched my bicycle from the ta- from 10th standard so one day i took my cy- took a cycle borrowed a friend cycle um, went to work and i was like hey this is really nice you know uh, it was a great workout and it wasn't as tough and i had a great time going to work and uh, i decided that uh, i think this is worth uh, you know doing and went and bought a crazy expensive bicycle for 5000 rupees Uh, my dad thought I was crazy. Who buys bicycles for five thousand rupees? So it was a hero bicycle. So got that, and uh, started commuting to work. And that was my entire journey of restarting cycling. You know, right. and it was fantastic. I mean, uh, I mean, people who commute to work understand this. But when you commute to work on a bicycle, it doesn't matter if there's a traffic jam. It doesn't matter if it's a bad day. If it's raining. If it's sunshine. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's always a great day for you, and it's always a fantastic day when you reach home or you reach work. right so uh, like like everyone who commutes on a bicycle i absolutely loved it and you know it kind of reconnected me to what all was possible and uh, post that is when you know we started uh, riding on weekends and you know it just opened up an entire new world you know right so the what, what cycle was that hero hero thunder ha ah, hero, hero thunder, thunder. <laughs> i mean uh, if if you look at it now it might not be much but it was fantastic i mean i still remember going and buying from uh, you know the commercial street riding home and everyone looking at the bicycle like it's a silver bicycle uh, it was quite light must have weighed like a ton i don't know but it was quite light at that point it was the first aluminum bicycle made in india right uh, and hats off to these guys they made a pretty decent bike yeah and uh, it was 5600 rupees or something you know at that time all the bicycles were 
thousand two hundred, thousand three hundred bucks. So yeah. this is like quite expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that silver. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's quite quite a yeah. nice buy. Yeah, it and was. <laughs> it was perfect for commute as well. It was perfect. It, yeah. it was extremely light, and you know, we I think we even did a Mysore trip on it. So. Wow. <laughs> wow. So <laughs> when was this? This is 2006. I, I was working at ThoughtWorks at that point. So uh-huh. along with me, a bunch of uh, uh, you know guys decided to get bicycles too. So five of us decided to go from here to Mysore. Uh-huh. We didn't reach Mysore uh, at I think uh, I don't know some place. We decided to take a train back after I think 80 kilometers. We were kind of done uh-huh. because riding that bicycle is quite hard. It's not easy. Yeah. So we came back in the train, but it was a fantastic journey. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> right. So. That was uh, 2006. Yeah. Now, uh, from just ca- commuting to office to uh, then, when did this uh, thought of uh, you know a bike shop come mm-hmm. into the picture? Yeah, I mean, uh, so basically, uh, B- Bumble and Saddle was started by Nikhil and me. Nikhil was okay. Nikhil is my best friend, and yeah. uh, you know both of us so used to run a lot. We used to play a lot of basketball as as a professional sport. uh we know wanted to start a business mm. we thought business was a bad word yeah right i mean uh and selling something was like oh, how do you do this right yeah. so but we really loved the outdoors um and uh you know his was the bicycle that i borrowed to try out you know he he always used to ride his bicycle mm. so uh, and was he the one who suggested come here yeah Okay. So he used to, he used to buy actually bicycle to work. Okay. And uh, for some some reason I never tried it, you know. And he had this BSA bicycle which he used to commute, and I took his, and you know that's how the whole thing started. And uh, the whole thing actually, I mean, we never wanted to start a business. Mm-hmm. And on the weekends he used to be on his BSA, and I used to be on my Hero, and we used to go out, you know, discovering the place, trying all crazy stuff. I mean, this was the pre-helmet days. Right. Right. I mean, it was really really long time back. Uh, This is the time. I mean, like people don't understand this, but when I wanted a tail light, I actually had to go to SP Road, buy LED lamps, get a design, solder the whole thing, right. and that was my first LED lamp because nothing was available in the country. Wow! Right? I mean, this it's people just cannot imagine this now. But I had actually had solder my first lamp and used one in a backpack so that I'm safe and I'm commuting on my hero. Right? right. So um, what happened was uh, we rode quite a bit in in 2005. Mm. And in end of 2005, we heard of this bicycle brand called Firefox, which was entering the country. Okay. And the bicycles were 11,000, expensive. Right. So for us, expensive equated must be fantastic. Yeah. So we were super waiting for this bicycle brand to enter the market. And the day we came to know that it reached Bangalore, both of us went and bought our first bicycles. Okay. Uh, the experience was not great yeah. because obviously at that point we didn't really have bicycle stores. We just had shops selling product. Right. Uh, both Nikhil and me were so passionate about it. We expected like our worlds to match what they were selling. It didn't happen, right? Yeah. So both of us were quite unhappy about it. Mm-hmm. And uh, but we still bought the Firefox bike. And for the first time, we realized that you know uh, a good bike made a huge difference to our riding. Correct. You know, I mean, like all of us have seen, right? As soon as you put good product into something that you're really passionate, excited about, it goes to the next level. Right. So we suddenly realized the impact of that, and we also realized that there must be a lot of other people around us. uh who were also similar to us who really enjoyed cycling mm-hmm. and and those are the seeds to uh, what is now actually a cycling company right right so what happened was we got our firefoxes we started doing a lot more 100 km rides we started riding a lot on weekends Which, and what what the firefox was that uh, this is a firefox target yeah again a fantastic uh, again, bike you know fantastic yeah, yeah fantastic i mean people i mean pretty similar to kind of uh, he, uh, the hero Uh, this one, right? Or the one you had, Thunder. Thunder, yeah. It's pretty similar, but much better quality. Yeah, hundred percent. Like yeah. so much better, right? Yeah. Like just a better frame. I mean, I, you know, when when your bicycle changes your riding, mm-hmm. it's a very powerful thing, right? Suddenly right. you're feeling much more invincible. Uh, your brakes are working. We never realized your brakes <laughs> didn't work earlier, right? But now your brakes are working, and you're like, I mean, I don't know. All these are like mental game changers, you know. Yeah. So we got the bicycle, and we were so happy about it, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, you could go so much faster. We suddenly started going downhill. I mean, the the riding just changed. You know, when you got onto a Firefox, uh, and um, so yeah, so uh, we were not happy about this. And you know, during this period, uh, we were constantly talking to the CEO of Firefox, mm-hmm. saying, "When is it coming to Bangalore? We want to buy two bicycles." Yeah. You know, and it was only available in Chennai when they first launched. So mm-hmm. we were quite close to him. I mean, we got to know him quite well in this couple of months, and. 
when we are not happy about it, we were quite vocal to him saying that we are not happy about this right and uh, i don't know how he listened to a bunch of kids like both of us were like quite young 25 at that point yeah. so he listened to us and he entertained us and he gave us suggestion and you know what happened was uh, in 2006 trek entered the market mm. through firefox and when they entered the market uh, mr shivendra singh who is the ceo of firefox called us up and said you guys have complained so much why don't you guys do something about it and you know uh, set up a shop for trek so complaining about the availability complaining Everything. about the experience yeah. and we were just complaining we were just bitching about it <laughs> we were very vocal about it right like i mean at least for me if i'm not happy about something i'm very vocal about it so right. uh, yeah so we were just like bitching about it so yeah. he was like okay you guys have said so much uh, and you guys and at the same time we were also fixing our bikes mm. at the same time we were leading community at that point we were going on rides we were talking about it mm. uh, we have a blog where the first post is to the so you know we were creating content for people to see yeah. and people were following us and people were talking to us for advice you know at that okay. point what was the blog it same blog dot bums on the side it's still there so the oh. first post is right then oh, wow yeah i mean if you go i mean the 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 bums on the side blog is quite interesting i mean yeah. uh, it's actually captured a lot of our journey from then till now so awesome. you know if you go to the first few posts you i mean you can actually see and hear the the issues you know so it's quite yeah. interesting yeah um so yeah so um So yeah, so basically, uh, we were leading community at that point, and we were creating a lot of rides. So Sh- Shivendra Singh saw all this from Delhi, you know, and mm. he's like, "Why did you guys set up shop?" And we thought he was crazy. Mm. Like, who wants to set up a bicycle store? Yeah. Right. So, so those were the beginning. Uh, you know, that's where the entire concept got seeded. You know, so yeah. it was more of like uh, not wanting to run a business. It was wanting to create change. It was wanting to have fun out there. Yeah. It, it was wanting to support and create more riding. So that's the kind of DNA that we've got built up for us, you know, okay. all by chance, not by intention. Yeah, it's just purely by chance, you know. Great. So this one, when you were talking about uh, sharing, uh, you know, and leading that community, you are referring to the Google, uh, BBC Google groups. Or, no, uh, this was before that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like I mean, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so what happened was uh, this is way before that. So before Facebook, there was Google groups for people, yeah. you know, who remember this. Yeah. and uh, the only community we had was runners for life right. all of us were on the running group okay and i think uh, nikhil and me spoke so much about cycling that they chucked us out of there <laughs> i said please get out of here don't talk about cycling so there were seven of us who moved from there and started actually i didn't start bangalore bicycle uh, bangalore uh, bikers club there's another guy called nagraj who started this yeah. so all of us got chucked out of this yeah and chucked out as they said please don't talk about cycling here <laughs> so we said okay screw this like let's go you know set up something for cycling and we set up something called bangalore bikers club which is still active today yeah yeah very you know active. yeah it's very active right it's got like some 7000 or yeah, i don't know how many people are there right now yeah. so um so yeah so that's how uh, you know that community thing started there mm-hmm. you know uh, okay this is very interesting so uh, he uh, he asked you to kind of uh, start um, uh, a shop and then nickel and you <laughs> were like put in a spot in a way <laughs> no putting a spot you just thought he was crazy like yeah. who wants to set up a shop right yeah. and uh, it was interesting because we had, this was again 2005 itself like then one year a lot happened you know yeah. and um, at that point uh, so nickel is a little bit more conservative mm. i'm a little bit more risk taking you know okay. it, it's a great mix yeah left to me i'll run off the cliff left to nikhil he won't do much but together we're a great team yeah so nikhil was like we should not do this yeah. you know and we spoke about it quite a bit we used to run so we, we spoke about it quite a bit and we thought it would be an interesting experiment mm-hmm. not to run a business mm-hmm. but to be more effective in what we do we thought like having a bike shop is a great thing yeah you know i mean so much fun right yeah you're surrounded by things you love uh you talking to people uh like you yeah. what can be better than that yeah. right and uh, we all always had this experience of what we wanted when we picked up a bike we like we can deliver that mm. so we weren't excited about the selling of product right. but we were very excited about the concept right and uh, i mean honestly it took us like i think some 6 7 years to really understand what running a bike shop meant after that you know mm. but at that point it was like okay let's have fun you know mm. and uh, Shivendra was up for it because I don't know how we trust us. Like seriously, yeah. I don't yeah. know how we trust us. We we had never run a business, mm. uh, no experience at all, yeah. and you're talking about a brand like Trek yeah. in a country like India, which yeah. is expensive. How do you trust two kids in you know? And you've not even met them, right? Yeah. And yeah, some of the stories are crazy. Like I mean, you know, Nikhil and me to set up a shop in your shop, right? Yeah. 
so we went looking around for shops and we realized that we're not cut out for this yeah. and then we started figuring out what to do i mean one of the recommendations we had given shiv was like hey i have a a lawn in the front like what a footpath yeah. saturday sunday we'll put up a tent and we'll sell bikes and uh, after sunday we'll take the tent out and you know that was our weekend shop plan and, and i really honestly hats off to that man yeah. i don't know how he patiently listened to us and said maybe this is not a good idea <laughs> instead of telling us you guys are like just crazy <laughs> Right, like I mean, if yeah. I there, I just been like, "What are you guys smoking, man?" Yeah. He was just like, "I don't think this is a good idea," like you know. And he gave a few reasons, and we said, "Okay, we'll think about it," and we went back. So, so yeah, I mean, uh, so it wasn't a quick yes. Let's set up a shop. We bought a shop mm-hmm. or got a shop, right? It was quite a long process when Nikhil and me were really figuring out should we do this, mm-hmm. and we figured that I think it's a great learning experience. The risk was not much. Yeah. Uh, it is in a space that we love. uh and let's do it okay so and then we figured uh, you know we, we we went and we actually the initial bought shop with we this close to finding a shop in malaysia okay if that it was a kind of an attic kind of space beautiful space mm. small space yeah but if that happened bought we have closed within like 6 months because it was yeah. so far away for us yeah it would just not work and i'm so glad it didn't happen yeah uh, finally we uh, decided nikhil's dad said okay uh, you guys have been working for quite some time you can use my terrace right and that's how the first shop came up you know okay three floors high yeah which is like crazy right again <laughs> yeah. like who, who has a bike shop on the rooftop rooftop <laughs> terrace <laughs> <laughs> on the uh, third floor of a building. On the third floor of the building. I mean, it was insane. Like, I mean, uh, again, like I said, like, I mean, I, I think we're just lucky that we are still alive. Yeah. And uh, still lucky that we're doing relatively okay. But uh, we did some crazy things out there. Yeah. You know. No, I I think uh, you know calling it luck is uh, a bit uh, you know a bit of an understatement <laughs> uh, <laughs> to say. i i i see if if i go through uh, you know the history of bots and uh, uh, you know how we grew over the years right uh, just for an example the kind of impact bots had um, i i had um, published about uh, 16 episodes so far mm-hmm. okay and uh, at least five of them spoke about bots oh wow that's and, awesome and the uh, terrace bots right, sure. okay yeah. um so one of them was arvind uh-huh. okay um and then um uh, another guy the first guy who finished ram from uh-huh. india uh-huh. srinivas gokulna yeah. spoke about watching a uh, bb uh, the movie, movie right <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what is that movie? The Ram Chasing movie, Legend. Chasing Legends. Huh? No, the Ram movie, right? The, the Ram right, movie, right, 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 right. And how you know it kind of changed his whole perspective and yeah. all that. So you know, calling it luck is, <laughs> I would say, a, a gross understatement. But uh, yeah, coming back to that terrace, right? Yeah, it is. It is. It is quite uh, quite a crazy uh, thing. But yeah. you were working at that time, yeah. And then you were operating only over the weekends, yeah. Uh, at that time, so how how did that uh, you know how, how were those initial days? Yeah, we were not really operating only on the weekends. I mean, I'll give you a, like in the morning when I was on the pot, I was doing customer service. Oh, customer service, email stuff. Yeah. Because I mean, I I worked at ThoughtWorks, which is an IT company, and. it was a fantastic place i mean i think that was one of the reasons why we ran bots only on a weekend mode just because i was working in thoughtworks i, I think it was working any else i just quit and done this full time yeah. right thoughtworks is a great place it was extremely demanding so you know from whatever 10 in the morning till like 7 8 in the evening was like quite packed you know so i didn't really find a need to do work there right but you know before that and after that was work i mean it was a lot of work so uh, the initial format of the store was uh, we kept I mean, we had demo. I mean, we had some stuff which I can't imagine. We had demo bikes. We missed in a little bit of inventory. Uh, it was a beautiful space. It was just two hundred square feet, but quite nice, uh, stark, clean. Uh, and the terrace was huge. It was about two thousand square feet terrace. And you know, uh, overall, and there's a huge rain tree kind of covering the whole thing. You know, okay. so it was quite nice, uh, quite unique. Okay. And uh, we didn't have a signboard. Mm. you know and uh, so pe- people who came to us really wanted to buy a bike right which is great yeah. uh, we had a great connect to these guys but uh, but you're right i mean we were working at that time uh, and we were quite clear with uh, firefox and trek that we would do this only on saturday sundays yeah but uh, it was a lot of work through the week we were you know replying to customers uh, right. you know returning calls which came during the day yeah uh, figuring out uh, 
because we were also active with community, right? So I was very active on social, on uh, not social media. It was uh, the groups at that point. Right. Uh, I was very active on forums at that point. Yeah. Right. Because uh, this is an exciting project, and you wanted to yeah. take this to like. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was a ton of time spent on this. Okay. Right. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it never felt hard. It just felt like it was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I was just talking to Nikhil recently, and you know, occasionally once a week, catch me like, man, those are crazy years. Like there were times when we used to both come home at like whatever eight o'clock, nine o'clock, yeah. and then we would be up till two o'clock on a Friday, you know, setting up the place for the weekend, and you would go home and uh, you'd come back again at nine o'clock the next day, and trust me, there were days from nine o'clock in the morning till like I think seven p.m. where we have not dr- had a drop of water. We have not eaten anything. Wow! I mean, at seven o'clock when you sit down, like the day is done, right? Yeah. And you don't even feel the hunger, <laughs> right? I mean, it because was you're you're so consumed with yeah. the you know yeah. the passion for the, what you were doing. Yeah. yeah, like I mean, so there's there's a difference, right? Yeah, yeah. The, you're consumed with what you're doing, right? Yeah. The passion was for riding a bike, not for running a business, <laughs> right? Like I mean, that's just the whole yeah. thing. Like yeah. he did this because he loved riding a bike. Yeah. But we weren't riding a bike on the rooftop. We were uh, getting other people to ride bikes. Right. But we didn't realize this when we started out. Yeah. Right. We were like, oh, riding a bike must be so awesome. This house must be also awesome. We just extended that. Right. But it's actually two separate things. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. So how how did this kind of impact your riding? Ah, uh, so uh, this is two thousand six, right? Yeah. Uh, till the time I was in ThoughtWorks. Yeah. Because I was doing this, I wrote more and more. Uh-huh. Right. Like I mean, it was it was amazing. Like I mean. Uh, I, we did a lot of century rides. We did, a, I mean, we did a lot of riding. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no training at that point. Like yeah. training is a very new yes. concept. Yeah. You know, coaching is a very new concept. Correct. Uh, racing was a relatively new concept, yeah. right? But uh, I, I think um, because I was connected in the space, it gave me a lot of opportunity to connect with like-minded people and ride a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, so up till the time I quit ThoughtWorks to ride to take bots full time. i think my riding just substantially grew you know mm-hmm. so it was actually quite exciting okay you i was able to ride i was able to uh, you know get to work so for example what happened was uh, sundays we realized we had stopped riding mm-hmm. so we decided to do half days on sundays i mean it was like a freaking two day week and yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was so, sunday as half day <laughs> so cut two days into one and a half days <laughs> yeah actually nikhil was like only saturday and a customer was really like bugger first of all like i need to take an appointment through the week yeah. then come and find you guys and then come and out of that one day that you know you guys are operating right <laughs> So yeah, so Sunday morning we used to go for a ride, and then uh, you know I used to come back and I used to do like you know a few hours. Uh, so normally for me personally, like when I do something, I want to do hundred percent, right, thousand percent if possible, yeah. right. I mean I don't mind uh, stretching a bit more. Yeah. So it was it was great. It was a lot of work, but it was great. Yeah. So were you riding on the weekdays as well? Yeah, I was commuting to work. Commuting. Yeah, I was commuting to work. Yeah. Uh, I mean that with uh, work that was the only thing that was possible. That's possible. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And then uh, doing long rides on Sundays. Sundays. Yeah, you know we used to do a lot of trail rides at that point. Like yeah. a lot of like I don't know, funny. Bang was grown a lot in ten years. Yeah. But you know, and we used to do a lot. We used to go to Whitefield and ride with those guys there. Yeah. Go to Hinwood, ride there. Yeah. You know, everywhere. Like yeah. Banalgarh side, ride there. Correct. Uh, it wasn't road riding as much. Road riding we used to do all Savanurga side, and you know uh, we used to do South Bangalore. Right. Nandi was never that popular at that point in time. Yeah. So a lot of cross uh, cross country, a lot of uh, road, you know, road South Bangalore. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You, you, I remember even when I came to Bangalore uh, first, newly in 2000, end of 2010, 2011. I used to uh, uh, come to Thorhelli and ride yeah. that there. Yeah. I used to go to Savanurga. Yeah. I used to go to ride with the Whitefield riders. Correct. Correct. So. Uh, because getting to another part of the uh, you know uh, city was not as difficult as it is now correct because yeah, yeah. absolutely now you you would be scared of you know going out would be fine because yeah. early morning no one is awake but coming back yeah <laughs> is going to be a yeah. killer for me if it's a if it's a nandi hill ride coming back from you know from the time you know it's hebar it was like oh my god so much of traffic If you're driving back though, it's a one and a half hour drive. It's like not worth it at all. Yeah, yeah. You know. So yeah, but then it wasn't there. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so it was a lot of riding. Yeah. Uh, you know, commutes are great. It was like a twenty-five kilometers daily. Mm-hmm. Uh, weekends was at least like a fifty kilometer trail ride, sixty kilometer trail ride. A lot of exploring. Yeah. A lot of uh, you know. I mean, I mean, see, this is the difference, right? At that point, a lot of our rides were in chappals. Yeah, hundred. I mean, I see pictures and I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> like, I'm wearing some shorts and like some random stuff, and 
you know you have this five guys not looking like cyclists at all <laughs> everyone's done a you know 180 km ride and come back you know oh. i mean yeah it's it's just uh, when you you know shot on the fastest like wow what's happening here <laughs> you should share share those pictures with you i said definitely send it to you <laughs> <laughs> right so you know you you you've been riding uh, over the weekends and uh, doing all these long rides and uh, doing this shop from the terrace yeah. like one and a half day operating session you know uh, for one and a half day so how was that experience in those initial days the shop what are what were the yeah. things what were the fun parts what were the kind of challenges you this was challenges i mean uh, challenges there were challenges the challenges are more from a government perspective that okay right like getting a license and uh, you know uh, figuring out agreements i think that was the challenge uh-huh. like like this is from someone who didn't know how to write a check like yeah. i don't know where the check number was like okay. the first check number you know when we rode we had to pay firefox for the first set of bikes yeah. and nikhil and me like which is the check number we don't know so we call his dad and ask him which is the check number he looks at us and <laughs> what are you guys doing man like you're running a business so i mean from there you're running a business right yeah. so uh you know the initial agreements are tough uh, registrations were tough yeah. uh, finding an accountant was tough right. those are the tough parts right. everything else was fun yeah right i mean there were no customers in fact we i don't know if we ended up when i don't remember this but you know beyond this point there were no customers only riders right i'm yeah. a rider you're a rider we're talking yeah i don't care if you buy it or not that is a, right that is a great uh, yeah it's and, and it's such a powerful mindset right yeah. i mean um so yeah i mean uh, it wasn't really you're trying to sell something somebody you're trying to push it didn't matter mm-hmm. you know uh, we just did the best of trying to put people on bikes and have a great time and build a great experience you know mm-hmm. we were constantly trying to work on that experience like when somebody walked away they were like wow this is this is something unique yeah you know so nikhil and me were really good at that uh, mm-hmm. we really enjoyed doing that mm-hmm. uh, and we learned a whole bunch of st- stuff along the way you know how to sell and mm-hmm. uh, so everything that we did was there had to be an element which you really enjoyed like for example you were talking about the the video right right i mean we had this concept of i mean i, I remember seeing the first uh, movie it was called rome uh-huh. it was a mountain biking video i mean it is the first time i remember sitting it was dark it was quiet at your phone and i watched this movie and i'm like what the shit is happening here people are like 10 feet in the air upside down on the bikes and i've never seen something like this yeah before. yeah right and uh, road biking was not that big in terms of movies at that point but i saw this and i like i have to share this with everybody yeah and the best thing to share it is we have a bike shop to share it yeah, yeah. so we got like a 10 feet or whatever screen and we got a projector and we played and we invited people and everyone sitting on the terrace under the stars watching this so that's how you know the entire movie night thing started you know and Fantastic. once a month yeah i mean it's stuff that you don't think about much but it just happened you know yeah. and it, it was such a great community building exercise i mean we didn't do it to build community but just for the love yeah. of it and it It, as i said it inspired so many people it inspired right? so many people like yeah. that was fantastic right yeah. i mean i didn't know for example lakshmi was like this is the inspiration yeah. came from there yeah. right but yeah i mean i can imagine you see this and you're like man i can i'd like to do something like this right right so i mean and there were some great times like i mean sometimes somebody got a barbecue and we had a barbecue and we were watching this yeah. you know somebody got a music system somebody got some samosas i mean somebody got some beer i mean this is on the rooftop you can yeah. do whatever you want you want to smoke you smoke man it doesn't matter yeah. it was that kind of setup there you know so yeah. uh, so it was great i mean uh, uh, you know so there were no challenges but there was a lot of fun uh, it was obviously hard work but if you enjoy it yeah you know uh, in end of the day you're like wow this is a great day you know right so yeah i mean uh, fun things were like this movie nights fun things was uh, putting somebody on a bike i mean that's the bit that i really love about the business right now yeah uh, even today right like if somebody's put on a bike internally it's shared and everyone's giving a high five yeah. i mean it's such a great feeling right yeah, yeah, yeah. you you uh, shared your passion with somebody and hopefully they're going to take it to the next level now yeah so from then till now i think that's been very consistent you know putting people on bikes right. you know a uh, uh, lot of them remember you yeah you know definitely. uh you remember the guy who put you on a bike yeah definitely right yeah, so yeah. and they don't treat you like a sales guy yeah you know it's it's like uh, someone very close to you right yeah. so i really enjoyed that feeling then mm-hmm. uh obviously running events doing some crazy so all that was great yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so <clears throat> how how long did uh you know bumps on the saddle uh, was on the terrace on the terrace so that's that's very interesting so after like Two years, like Nikhil and me, constantly figure out: should we take full time, not full time? Take full time, not full. Took us like another three years to figure that out. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then, uh, so for five years, we ran it in that mode. Yeah. 
Okay. Where uh, I worked at ThoughtWorks, Nikhil was working in this place called Altair at that time. He's a mechanical engineer. Mm-hmm. So we did our day, you know, day jobs, yeah. and in the even, whatever weekends we did this. Yeah. So for five years we did it. Uh, it grew substantially. I mean, from two thousand six to two thousand eleven. Eleven. Two thousand ten. Eleven. Yeah. Two thousand eleven. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Two thousand eleven. We moved to an actual proper store format. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So five years was a lot of time. To be in that mode, right? Right. right? Uh, I wish it moved a little faster, but uh, still, it was it was great. I mean, yeah, still, still, you touched a lot of people. Yeah, we did. Still, uh, you know, put a lot of uh, people on the bikes. Yeah, we did. And still, changed a lot of lives. We did. Right. I mean, we definitely did. I mean, that's yeah. what I mean. That's like super proud for both Nikhil and me. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting. Like, I mean, uh, you know, until recently, like until a few years back, we didn't realize that we actually, uh, like, you know. uh when as the business grew and we got to the distribution we said okay let's give a hand at distribution also right and then we start talking to bike shops mm-hmm. and then we realized shucks is not just bikers bike shops show what we were doing yeah. and said hey this looks cool you know i want to do this yeah so what is really kind of awesome was that bike shops also got inspired by this right i mean that that's a great point see uh one of the bike shops uh, i i i i think um i don't know if he got inspired from you but i definitely see it as inspiration from you uh, is uh, tba yeah tba directly they they told yeah, me this yes. if you saw you guys doing this Krish, TBA, yeah Krish, absolutely I, i was in hyderabad i i he was my first uh, ride partner right. as a century ride partner we used to ride together uh, you know a lot and um, he and uh, uh, gokul yeah uh, started uh, the you know uh, bike affair just to be being inspired by you guys yeah. right and uh, he was working yep. gokul was, was working, working. Yep. and uh, I, i i was working in hyderabad and uh, you know when they guys, those guys started I, and i was inspired to join them because i i like to uh, you know hang out with Uh, them so much when they started the uh, shop yeah um, it, it's funny uh, you uh, you started in a kind of terrace right yeah. he started in a cement godown correct <laughs> i've gone to that place <laughs> oh and uh, it was fantastic yeah. same spirit we used to love hanging yeah. uh, out there absolutely and uh, you know at one point i, I was uh, supposed to be a partner uh, oh wow i didn't know this <laughs> I know this is okay. supposed to be a partner uh, with him uh, but then uh, you know Bangalore uh, the job shift to Bangalore happened and it kind of uh, you know pushed to a back page interesting otherwise yeah. i would be in tv <laughs> interesting interesting <laughs> so yeah you guys touched a lot of lives yeah there, it did so, i mean it's uh, i don't know if it's <laughs> better or not but whatever but a lot of people kind of saw us in the south and yeah. you know i mean i think we did that quite well initially which is talk a lot about what we did right mm-hmm. i mean uh, i used to blog quite a bit then yeah. um, and you know uh, it's like uh, if a tree fell in the forest yeah. uh, and no one listened to it did yeah. it really fall yeah exactly like you have to talk about what talk the about cool it. stuff right yeah, yeah. and you have to make it like way cooler than it is because it's so awesome right <laughs> yeah. so i i mean I, i like photography i like talking so and, and then at some point facebook happened yeah. so that gave us like so much of visibility yeah and uh, you know it is interesting because a lot of people are watching us mm. and a lot of people who's you know previous generation in the business mm. suddenly saw this as something exciting not yeah, yeah. i'm just selling a bicycle you know Correct. and so many have done a, so many of them have taken that and done such a great job going forward you know like yeah. i mean tv is a great example yeah. uh, maybe they saw this as cool from what we did but they've taken it to the next level and awesome. done such a great job yeah, yeah. you know so uh, yeah so i mean these are like the really proud moments for us you know yeah, yeah. that uh, okay sitting in bangalore trying to put a few people on bikes and having a great time oh wow all this happened we didn't even realize this yes, you yes, know yes. so yeah so uh, and you operated in uh, the uh, uh, terrace mode yeah. for 5 years but uh, and have, have been doing a lot of community events like so the movie night was yeah. one thing uh, then sunday rides and uh, something very interesting uh, also happened during that time around 2008 uh, bbc h 2009 2009 yeah so how did that Uh, take shape. So interestingly, we did breves before that. Oh, breves. So not many people know this. We ran the first breve here. Wow. Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, yeah. uh, so I mean, the thing is, when when the slate is clean, yeah. and 
somehow we have a lot of time in hand you end up doing a lot right right and uh, so what happened was uh, we actually ran the first brewery in uh, collaboration with uh, no actually sorry i think the bbc happened first the brewery happened we ran it with a team called the fleeted warriors <laughs> and with this uh, person called venkata chalam venkata chalam yeah. yes and, nalan <laughs> yeah and it was very interesting so the the team came from bbc so sorry so maybe this is uh, the next part yeah. but bbc came first because the fleeted warriors team came from bbc yeah. and then we ran the first brewery in partnership with them and it was very interesting yeah. because uh, uh, it is you know we didn't know so before that uh, we heard of this breve that happened in goa uh-huh. and a few people went for it uh-huh. and we were like what is this and poor i came like whoa this is awesome we should go in bangalore yeah, yeah. right and uh, we we didn't know if it was going to work or not so we did the first we had a test breve mm-hmm. so before the actual breve we ran a test breve from kavan park and we had like 180 people who came for that wow i mean we were mind blown like for a yeah. test breve we had so many people and we all rode towards uh, nandi hills towards hyderabad you know yeah. and a crazy route for a first brave because it's all like yeah, yeah you know so but a lot of people completed uh, completed and we had a great time and then we ran the actual brave which again had a massive participation so it is interesting and this was like uh, maybe it was 2010 because i know we started bbc session in 2009 mm-hmm. but you know the first brave then actually had so many people who came for it you know yeah yeah after to do a 200 km right yeah <laughs> for 200 km yeah. yeah i remember uh, some um, actually arvin mentioning uh, the long ride 200 km yeah. rides and uh, ride to mysore and back yeah. and all that stuff yeah all this is part of that <laughs> yeah so we had an inspiration from uh, this person called uh, samim at that point mm-hmm. uh, not many people know about him but this guy should be an ultra endurance rider you know yeah yeah uh he has yeah, so he went to the ram and uh, I, i don't know what's happened after that but he he did hold a lot of us together to show us what long distance riding was mm-hmm. and I, and i think this is what's important as leadership in the community right like right. he was someone who gave us what we just didn't have yeah you know uh yeah. so yeah i mean he taught us like how to like what happens when you bomb how to fuel correctly how do you ride 108 km 180 km ride mm-hmm. how do you pedal ride i mean important stuff which yeah, you learn yeah, yeah. riding you know yeah, yeah. you can't do this in a classroom or you can't mm-hmm. read about this yeah. it has to be on a ride correct so correct. he did all this and that's how you know we got to that long distance riding sport you know? mm-hmm. but coming to bbc i mean uh, yeah i mean so we started bbc in 2009 mm-hmm. uh, very interesting so uh, we used to do a lot of riding then uh, right. on weekends mm-hmm. and there was this one ride where uh, you know um, just the weekend previous to that mm-hmm. uh, two people uh, you know vasu and jagan had just run something called an itd jagannath murti right jagannath murti both yeah. of them had run this thing called an itd like both vasu had, mishra and jagannath yeah vasu yeah. mishra and jagannath murti so they had done this thing called an itd like what the hell is an itd yeah. and then there's this format of a race and they said we just picked up some road and we ran an event yeah it was a time limited event right and uh, i mean what is interesting to me was um, you remember how many people oh, i don't remember how many people went yeah. it wasn't a small number yeah right it wasn't a small number i remember that wow right yeah, yeah. but i remember like i played basketball through my life yeah. um, as a sport you know yeah. and uh, the the concept of sport is very interesting to me yeah. like the uh, you know when you push hard the teamwork yeah. you know uh, winning losing all these very important elements to me yeah so when i saw that possible in cycling i thought this is really interesting right mm-hmm. because uh, at that point uh, sport cycling as a sport was available only at a national level right uh, you know most of the time you and me couldn't attend that yeah, you had no. to you know it was very inaccessible correct nobody knew about there's no glory in it yeah right so for me uh, suddenly what they did was very interesting and i said i don't know how that connect happened you know can we do that at a more regular basis correct uh, so that's what is the roots for bangalore cycle uh, bangalore bicycle championships you know and uh on the same day you know uh, a bunch of us were riding in north bangalore there was uh, samin vivek radhakrishnan myself and a few others there were six of us riding and we were riding uh, in a peloton there yeah. and riding quite fast right and we were like man this is awesome yeah <laughs> right like you riding by yourself is nice but riding in a group in a group pushing the, hard yeah. you know there's a different experience there right, right. and we were like so basically the fact that these guys is an itt mm-hmm. the fact that you're out there and i was talking to vivek saying hey this is interesting like would you be interested in, in a race and everyone was like yeah it would be interesting yeah. so those are the seeds for bangalore bicycle championship right now from there to what happened now was very interesting right there were yeah. a bunch of decisions that got taken again not from experience or not from you know we we said we'll do something right we gave it a name yeah 
we said we'll run it monthly yeah right we said the date won't change yeah no matter there's a freaking bang also we'll run it yeah right uh, and we made it exciting road off road we added variety uh, we made it not paid we made it like a fun thing but a sport mm-hmm. you know uh, and that took off the entire racing thing right for so the non- it, was, it was not paid to begin with it was not paid to begin with i mean we had uh, See, the whole thing was to enjoy the spirit of sport, right? Mm-hmm. There wasn't a profit uh, thing there. Yeah, yeah. Neither was a sustainability angle there. Yeah. Right. Like right now, after so much time, I'm very clear that I want to make something sustainable. Correct. You Correct. know, it's very important to me. I yeah. spent so much of my time. I want to make sure that that benefit lasts much longer. I'm not interested in doing something just for today. Yeah. Right. So at that point, it wasn't there. Yeah. So and uh, we had a business of cycling. Mm-hmm. If there's money in it, I take it from this and put it into that. Yeah. So for five years, we did that. Yeah. Right. And so money was not a big deal. right but at the same time we knew that the connect was important so we created this jazzy vitamin m box yes right yeah. so uh, and people could just put whatever donation because the thing is to run every race was uh, it took a little bit of money yeah even now it's super expensive to run a race people yes. don't realize this yes. you know uh, it is expensive to run races uh, so we had this vitamin m box people put whatever they want I, i remember uh, yeah. that vitamin m box i used to go around yeah. with that yeah exactly <laughs> right so, so that was so that was at the end of the race right? is to kind of force people yeah. if, if you see a person <laughs> holding it they are, they are forced to do. <laughs> otherwise uh, if you keep it there and ask yeah. people to go and put it in, instead i would yeah. go and go around yeah yeah absolutely like <laughs> oh, i still remember those days so awesome So yeah, so during the week uh, we used to have it in at the bike shop on a rooftop. So yeah. people are like, you know, if the small job put the money in there, and then yeah. during the race people used to put in money. Yeah. It could be anything, right? Put ten bucks doesn't matter. Yeah, it's a contribution. Yes, there's no judging on how much you contribute. Correct. If Correct. you don't want it, don't put it. Yeah. If you really enjoy the race, put how much you want, right? Yeah. And so we ran that for some time. Uh, yeah. So and then you know it was. more more volunteer driven yeah. you, you got a bunch of uh, guys from the community to yeah. come and uh, help at the races yeah. and uh, in, i think the the way the first race i came to was actually the itt <coughs> on the sajapur uh, yeah. uh, the uh, i don't remember that name that they you do they That's used the first to race. yeah they used to call uh, the uh, itt uh, yeah. road <laughs> road and uh, um, 2011 february was when i came actually. okay and, uh, and I, i was on my um, bulldog i think yeah. i was just uh, came and was watching the people you uh, know warming up yeah. on a train uh, i it, it was only samim Uh, Correct. <laughs> because no one else knew what bombing up was. Absolutely. <laughs> he did that in the first race also. He was on a trainer and a skin suit or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what is this? What is this? What is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> Why yeah. is he, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, riding on a stationary bike? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But I, I saw this and a bunch of others. Like, yeah, Dalam was there. Yeah. And Venkata Shalom was there. And a bunch of others. Uh, yeah. Uh, from uh, cleated warriors were there and uh, you know you guys uh, raced uh, out and back and then uh, came back and uh, entering a bunch of numbers in the laptop yeah. to uh, give out the results <laughs> and the podium yeah. at the end it was fantastic for me to watch and uh, at that time i was not into racing or i was just riding yeah Uh, but it was fantastic to watch and i used to come there uh, come and watch the races every time and uh, uh, that's how i got into racing yep. in 2011 august uh, for the ttt uh, uh, you uh, you guys were organizing and they said uh, whoever do, uh, doesn't have a team can ride an itt for me hmm. i was like okay and then i it was on uh, the shivas road uh, and yeah. i went i went down and came back on that bulldog and i was like whoa this is fast awesome. yeah and absolutely the story goes like i went back home and uh, brijesh calls me and says hey i got a medal for you i was like what it actually won yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i actually won the ipt <laughs> oh my god that's epic uh, and i was like that's how i got hooked to oh, this wow. that's interesting right? so that's bbc had played big role in right from there a big role in so many uh, yeah. people's uh, you know so many working earlier yeah. right so 
the the kind of uh, you know effort you guys have put in over the years on that is phenomenal I yeah think. actually bb search was a lot of work i mean yeah. uh, i think most people didn't see it yeah. but it was actually a lot of work yeah. you know i mean uh, i mean there's so many elements right like i was doing something i saw this you know i uh, you know, this is like the bbc uh, uh, you know this is the finishing flag you know yeah. and this is very interesting right like it looks like a checkered flag yeah but uh, the effort behind this was uh, we got a bunch of people who were racing mm-hmm. we got the kids to come to the rooftop uh-huh. and we got them to paint this yeah right this is painted this is painted this is painted by kids yeah right so uh, i mean yeah it wasn't i i can totally totally <laughs> uh, you know i identify with that because i i used to volunteer uh, at a bunch of those uh, you know planning meetings and yeah, stuff yeah right? yeah yeah absolutely yeah. i was like su- super uh, exciting stuff and lot of planning lot yeah. of work lot of thought yeah. into it uh, great job there. it is a lot of people right i mean the, the the interesting thing was like i said no like i mean for some reason uh, i think the biggest contribution was like setting that initial path right mm-hmm. and and realize like you know so many decisions that took which was not intentional just like i think this is a good idea yeah, yeah. kind of set up something which was so much bigger than all of us right? right i mean and and so many people kind of believed in that put in their effort yeah. you know yeah. so i don't think there's one person or something you know it's it's just that it's been a lot of work yeah. over the years and uh, you know it's been really great to see how much it has been impacting everybody you know yeah. like yeah. every grace is so phenomenal you know? yeah. like it's it's great to come there and see yeah. so many people racing uh, hard uh, just a funny thought came to my mind uh, because i used to be bitching a lot about bb sales <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> because it's always late you you do not starting on time oh your god the results are late oh my god. <laughs> you you're making people stand yeah. in the sun and all that right so like uh, you know you used to bitch about the way you know customer uh, yeah. experience yeah. and all that and ending up starting a, a you know shop i ended up starting bar, bar. right yes <laughs> oh, that was the reason the bar was there <laughs> to kind of show that it can be done that's <laughs> awesome that's really but, good but but yes you know and after uh, running the event it's a bar is a bare bone bare bone events right it's uh, you know the concept is no uh, you know uh, no effort and uh, no no low effort low effort yeah no there's tons of effort <laughs> <laughs> low effort and no kind no sponsorship yeah. nothing no uh, nothing that you know gives it an extra value yeah there was just someone coming and racing and going going back yeah. and maybe bragging if, if they race right yeah know? absolutely and then uh, maybe uh, sometimes i used to get cake to you know <laughs> people at this the end of it but that's you know that 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 yeah, thought uh, two things behind bar right one is the frequency of the races yeah. because i was bitching that there were not enough races yeah. right and uh, another thing was because i was bitching that uh, you know it was not starting on time it was not uh, you know results were not coming yeah. on time so <laughs> so th- th- those those are the things that i that kind that's of that's pretty awesome yeah yeah it's so awesome. i used to start on time and then results used to come out uh, like 10 minutes uh, yeah. you know we used to follow that yeah, right yeah, right it just be quite so, accurate and it kind of also uh, you know gave a lot of input to bbc and, and i i still volunteer at bbc and uh, you know mm. given a lot of inputs and stuff but and that's how as a community we kind of grew together yeah. bouncing off each other yeah, and, yeah. you know the ideas and you know inspiration or bitching or whatever it is right <laughs> no absolutely <laughs> yeah. i think uh, it's all good which grows it right yeah, like yeah. takes it to the positive yeah i yeah. think uh, yeah yeah oh, awesome yeah awesome so <clears throat> that's the so just funny right like yeah. i mean after running bbc for such a long time yeah. and after seeing bar right mm-hmm. uh, as a business now uh, our events are very much like bar mm-hmm. right like i mean as human beings we always want to keep improving right right and but you know you kind of realize that you do improvement doesn't mean adding another layer mm-hmm. it was crazy like some i remember this one race where somebody was uh, cribbing that there was no bathroom at the halfway point yeah and we like to what the hell are you talking about you know and then we realized that like you know there was a bathrooms arranged at a starting point which itself is like mind blown right yeah. like, how do you yeah, arrange yeah. bathrooms like 
you know so but we realized that you know uh, when running events like being better doesn't necessarily mean adding layers and layers and layers of complexity to it mm -hmm. you know but it means stripping it down to its absolute minimum where people get maximum value from it right, right. like what you did with bar i think it's yeah. phenomenal so right now as a business that's how we run most of our events mm -hmm. unless you are an event organizing company where you have the time to right you know so and then you charge yeah. for it and absolutely. then do that yeah. that is a different thing right? absolutely yeah that, that's a different so thing. there's a lot of learning from bar for us to that <laughs> <laughs> great to hear right so <clears throat> and now uh, let's switch gears a little bit and then you know talk about uh, uh, you guys you know have been a path breakers in so many ways mm -hmm. like now another thing that is very interesting is uh, bringing a brand like specialized mm -hmm. into it right yep. to india so that uh, what was the year 2012 to 13 13 13 yeah 13. i mean we started working on it uh, in 2012 took a lot of time mm -hmm. and i think 2013 is when we right. finally made it happen right yeah so and you know, for a place like india yeah and a specialized uh, a brand like specialized and that to a special show yeah is never heard of right? yeah this is something that happened only in like uh, the states and you you yeah. know and stuff like that maybe not even that much in europe right i don't think so yeah <laughs> well so that was a, a really uh, yeah. you know bold uh, thing how how did that materialize how did that happen i think a lot of times in life you should not know like you just be crazy about stuff and go do it yeah. and then really think about it right yeah. like i think specialized was one of those uh, moments you know mm -hmm. um i mean again it's crazy like you know uh, I think specialized started visiting bike shops in the country in 2012. I think that's when they started the team if I'm not mistaken, right? Mm -hmm. So they started visiting bike shops in the country just to see what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, a huge brand, right? And yeah. uh, India 1.3, I don't know, maybe 1.2 billion at that point. Right. 15 1.2 billion specialized bikes. I don't know. Whatever the thinking is. Yeah. Uh they came to India, they knocked on a lot of doors, they came and spoke to us as a bike shop, asked us like what kind of bike sell, what's the community? Um and met this really nice guy from specialized and uh, then i heard about this team that's being formed and they went back and uh, again they they came back in a, in a couple of months and i think it was just a wild idea of like hey maybe we should get specialized to india mm -hmm. right i don't know what that meant mm -hmm. uh, i in terms of effort money whatever like there was no idea in that right uh, it's just that uh, you know there was a strong belief that okay if you really want to do something do a freaking great job of it and you yeah. can do it yeah right so that's how the whole specialized story happened and uh i mean it was such a fantastic journey i mean it's very difficult to explain it because it's it's such a vast journey right like i mean uh, bringing an international brand and saying you want to distribute for it itself has so much of uh, what do you say uh, work behind it yeah you know uh, just from bringing the product bring the brand distributing it marketing it mm -hmm. supporting it yeah. oh it's it's, it's mind blowing it's mind blowing yeah. yeah like just learning like and uh, you know and you don't know any of that yeah you don't know how to import you don't know you know so a lot of learning in that right mm -hmm. and and you're running it in a country like india where i mean 30000 rupees is a lot of rupees lot for of a money. bike yeah yeah you know and specialized doesn't believe in entry level yeah whatever they do is the best yeah make a bottle is the best yeah and, and you know so i mean uh, we didn't really run market studies and all that at that point right right just believed in the brand believed in us and ran with it you know mm -hmm. so that's how it kicked off mm -hmm. uh, it was a fantastic journey yeah. right it was yeah. just absolutely uh, you know amazing yeah Uh, and there's so much that we learned with working with a brand like Specialized, right? Like, uh, uh, you know, what it means to think of quality. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, how do you run a cycling business? Like, what does it sometimes take to run a cycling business? Like, I, I mean, we learned a lot. Yeah. How do you run retail? How do you, you know, uh, how do you understand these things? So, I mean, we just learned a lot in that. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, I mean, one of the things with Specialized came in was saying that they want to set up the idea of concept stores. Mm -hmm. where it's only specialized and they do the specialized day you know right. so again didn't think too much about it we just jumped into it mm -hmm. uh, and executed it yeah. it was a lot of work again because right. finding a place and setting up the stuff was uh, something that was not heard of in india but they were quite supportive and you know we managed to set up a concept store in bangalore and pune and you know so yeah, yeah it was uh, super interesting <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, the lot of learning from it uh, i guess uh, the you know what what were the challenges that you found in a store like i mean this uh, bringing a brand and you know, selling it along with others yeah. is 
you know is yeah. okay but uh, the concept store uh, thing how feasible it is in india i i, I mean you yeah. ended up like moving away from it we did it for 5 years i mean yeah. uh, see the thing is with any business i mean uh, i think like even now right for mm-hmm. me it's like i'm learning how to run the business mm-hmm. i spent 14 years at it but i'm still learning yeah. every day there's some insight which comes up and like shit i wish i knew about this 14 years back right right uh, it is same thing with specialized because when you're what we did with specialized was uh, we knew how to run a bicycle store right we knew how to uh, have community engagement right but none of that was used for this yeah right honestly i don't even know how they decided that we should bring it in right mm-hmm. because there was brand development importing warehousing distribution sales supply chain warranties that yeah. was insane yeah great right? i mean and and setting up a con- i mean just setting up a, a bicycle store in the country means talking to landlords fixing rates figuring out how to run interiors uh, learning about uh, you know lights yeah learning about like how lights for i mean you know it's it's not what you're set up for yeah you know you're set up to ride a bike and sell a bike at you know worse right yeah. so i mean in that way i think we learned a lot in terms of uh, you know um how do you uh, run the supporting parts of the business you know mm-hmm. so it was at every single level how do you price the product in the country how do you compete with other brands in the country so it was a lot of learning uh, honestly it was a little too much yeah uh, it was very difficult to manage that entire thing and run three bicycle stores in the country right it right. was you kind of get stretched at one point yeah. so uh and a country like india doesn't make it easy because uh, like you know if you sell a 100 high end bikes it's actually damn good mm-hmm. but for someone who's from the us like a bicycle store does in a month what a country like india does in a year right. it's very difficult to understand this yeah, yeah. you know yeah. um so so yeah i mean uh, the concept store was great i mean it was a fantastic retail experience mm-hmm. when people came in they were able to experience the brand even before they saw the product correct right for a lot of people it took up bicycling from something it took them to a lifestyle you know because even if they didn't experience sport right. this soft product which was just blew them away yeah. you know so i think the concept store did a great job of setting up the brand across the country mm-hmm. uh, we ran that for 5 years and after 5 years i mean just from a economics perspective like as a business we decided to focus more on a single bike shop in bangalore yeah which kind of uh, makes sense to go with the original bike shop versus run two bike shops Correct. right so it kind of made sense to just run one bicycle store versus two. so that's the reason why full brash was doing quite well mm-hmm. um, i think it was a great space to be in yeah right uh, so yeah i mean uh, it was it was just a fantastic journey you know all right, all right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. and i think the bigger thing there was like for us it got us an opportunity to work with people at specialized mm-hmm. you know like i mean uh, you know sometimes in business or whatever you do uh, it's important to work with a coach right you know how much have you run by yourself i mean how much more can you ride or run right yeah, you need yeah. to work with a coach mm-hmm. even if they don't tell you what to do just being in their presence kind of uh, teaches you a lot right it sets a direction it's like whoa this is what's possible someone like a mentor yeah someone yeah. like a mentor right? so yeah. i feel like in that way like uh, working with these guys actually gave me that okay it gave me visibility into like whoa yeah this is what you need to be looking at you know this is how we think of quality this is how we think of retail this is how we think of customer support mm-hmm. you know this is how uh, aggressive you have to be in this business to really succeed you know okay whereas when you sit in your own shell yeah you're riding at 30 km you're like oh great <laughs> no <laughs> so in that way i think a lot of learning came from you know just visiting their uh, you know visiting their offices mm-hmm. visiting retail stores <laughs> they ran a lot of management sessions for us so that was also very interesting okay right uh, mm-hmm. it's it's a fantastic brand i mean uh, you know for most people bicycles are bicycles right right uh, some are very good bicycles some are expensive bicycles mm-hmm. but very few people get to exp- uh, experience the brand beyond the product okay right yeah. like how does the brand think how does it feel you know mm-hmm. what is important to them as a as a vision and for me that was amazing especially okay you know like the, and how that translated into the bike that i'm riding right now it all came from there you can see that right you know so that was that was super for me Awesome, 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 awesome. So <clears throat> now talking about uh, you know uh, going back to the uh, kind of community events and uh, uh, you know that you have started right, <laughs> when uh, in the initial journey and how that kind of uh, you know contributed to the growth of similar growth of that event like BBC yeah as contributed so much to um, the other events uh, 
across the country yeah. actually yeah. not just in bangalore with bar correct <laughs> but uh, you know events like uh, there are there is a racing series in hyderabad yeah. there is a racing series in pune yeah. uh, and you know delhi and all these places it has kind of uh, inspired a lot of people and that that uh, you know that has uh, to do with a lot of uh, uh, people talking about it a uh, lot of um, you know photos i yeah. think uh, i think is a big thing a lot of photography a yeah. lot, lot of photography that is something that i uh, uh, that i really uh, kind of uh, see as a big part uh, at bb search yeah because uh, people uh, uh, you know i think uh, some of uh, some people like me just uh, show up at the races just to get, get a nice good picture <laughs> get a nice yeah. picture right uh, and uh, i think that kind of uh, you know uh, people getting good pics and then talk uh, you know using that on social media and then it kind of blew up yeah. and helped spread the word a lot, a lot i think and, yeah. and uh, did you did you kind of uh, you know think on those lines when you yeah we did like i mean so a uh, lot of it was also intentional right like for example uh, when we started bbc after a few years so every year bbch had a specific goal mm. right like i mean uh, i think year number 3 was like let's uh, add teams to this mm. and every year the goal was uh, like i said you want to improve it right yeah. and uh, the thinking was like if we add this layer uh more people will end up racing mm-hmm. like i knew like since i played basketball i knew the, f- the format of a team having your team jersey all that is exciting right like you are wearing a mask now which is your team which is fantastic you have yeah. an identity more than yourself right it's right. bigger than you mm-hmm. so uh, so every year we had this one uh, additional thing that we did so one of the years i think was can we take bbch to across the country mm-hmm. right and we actually reached out to communities in uh, bombay delhi hyderabad chennai mm-hmm. and kolkata i think mm-hmm. and we actually tried to see if they can be these races run by those communities okay we'll yeah. give you what we did here yeah why don't you guys start something there we'll we'll provide you the template yeah. and you know, you know start yeah and we'll help you with whatever right yeah, like yeah. i mean so it started off i mean all these th- cities actually started racing but mm. i think hyderabad stuck on with some race series yeah, yeah. right so um, i mean lot of lot of different things came and went but yeah. now now another uh, uh series is quite regular now yeah. yeah yeah so you know i mean sustaining was a little tough but uh, that's how you know um, you know we kind of collaborate with these different things just to kick off racing you know right. because we saw the interesting part right i mean one is it got people uh, riding a lot more we saw people using it at sport you know it was very good mm-hmm. overall it was a great experience yeah. so for for listeners who are kind of new to all this uh, you know we uh, because i i am kind of talking to rohan about bbc because the, the, he was uh, i knew he was a big part of it because i worked closely uh, uh, you know volunteering and yeah. all that <laughs> uh, and uh, you know uh, i was also part of those discussions where uh, you finally decided you know you know instead of uh, bots being involved in the organizing Uh, of the thing um, putting a separate committee yeah. bbch committee and moving it away from uh, you know uh, bots and continuing to be involved with, with the community but from a more uh, distant level so that's that's where uh, you know i'm talking uh, to <laughs> rohan about the initial years of bbch and how you know all the things that uh, uh, he helped plan and organize how come it really handy um, yeah it's great to see where we see just now i mean it's, yeah, it's yeah. you know more people riding it i mean that was the intention when we did the transition right like right. i mean we looked at where we were we looked at uh, sentiment we looked at uh, you know where it could be right, right. and my primary thinking was uh, you know uh, i think it can be a lot bigger than yeah. one person correct right and uh, so so every year what one thing i did which is really good which again in retrospect fantastic job Correct. but not planned yeah. right no credit there it's like you know i had a team around me which uh, believed in it as much as i did yeah right so th- at that point the team was promised suman uh, arvin ganesh was here at that point yeah. vasu was there yeah. Yeah. so at that point it was like hey guys like i think this is what i should do and you know will you guys pick it up yeah and everyone was like yeah we'll yeah. do it 
right? So, run with it. Yeah, yeah we'll run with it, right? And my whole thing was like, okay, so this is how we're going to do the transition, you know? And uh, yeah, I mean, thanks to them. I mean, because if they had said that they can't do it, yeah. I mean, I would not have dropped it, yeah. right? I, but it would have been like a dicey spot for me on how to do the transition. Right? So it's really kudos to these guys for picking it up and then taking it out to the next level, you know? Yeah. I, I think they've done a fantastic job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they're doing a great job. Uh, yeah, with, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> now you you still continue to be part of uh, all these community mm. events. You you are still uh, you know Bots is a prominent uh, a, you know uh, uh, place at the start with the start line support. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, let's talk about these events that you you know do. Um, like Sunday rides yeah. and what else? Uh, so, I mean, like I said, initially, like, you know, uh, you know, every company has a DNA, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and primarily it starts from the founding reason. Right. And that DNA continues forever. Right. It doesn't change, yeah. you know, uh, if it changes, it's dead. Yeah. So for us, for bots, it's community, right? Like right. it's always been community. So uh, yes, there's a business, but you know, that community is very important. So that's something that's uh, continued even till now. Yeah. Uh, and you know, community is funny, right? You don't own community. Yeah. You know, it's it's, it's there, yeah. and you learn to give value to it. Right? The excitement comes from that. Yeah. Not from saying that's mine. Yeah. Right. And once you understand that, it's very easy. Yeah. Right. Then you understand where the benefit comes from. You are happy that you give something. That's a brilliant point. Right. Yeah. So so we do that as bots a lot now. Mm-hmm. Um, so one is whenever there's a community event, uh, startline support is a fantastic way. Uh, I didn't come up with the idea. I'm so happy about it. <laughs> like in the business, I'm happiest when somebody else does a great job of coming up with an idea. Yeah. Right. So Suresh came up with this uh, yeah. and he's like, we should do this. And they go, this sounds fantastic. Yeah. You know, and we've been doing it for, again, I think about four or five years now, maybe yeah. more. Uh, and basically go there, rock up, uh, you know, take a mix there, take a tools there, take a flag there, have some fun, do something, come back. Yeah. Don't brand it as bots. Yeah. Right. Like, uh, so learn to give, yeah. you know, uh, and you know, that's, that's something that we've done quite well. Now. Yeah. So with the bots start line support, right. It, it's fantastic for people uh, who are, you know, uh, who forget this or that yeah. and, <laughs> you know, have a puncture and no, they have no idea how to fix it or, yeah. you know, have to uh, put on a race yeah. tires at the last minute. Yeah. Or, Something like that, and you and you, uh, my sh- shifting is not working. Yeah. Uh, race, race in ten minutes and all that, right? You uh, guys do a great job. There. I mean, yeah. we have like crazy stories, right? Like, I mean, okay, racing is one thing, but you know, you're doing a three hundred kilometer, a six hundred kilometer, starting out with like a forty psi on your road bike tire is like just not okay. Yeah, yeah. Right? Or or you know, starting a brevet with like not proper brakes is just crazy yeah right so i mean uh, the team i mean again like the team is driving this quite a bit now rupert uh, you know hill uh, ravi all these guys are driving it a bit so there are these events supporting these guys sometimes they're crazy hours yeah but all fantastic all the grey yeah. stuff. yeah so you know it's fantastic it's like uh, you know for the people who get that last minute support maybe don't think about it as much yeah. but so useful right very very yeah. useful it's like <laughs> life saving <laughs> So, so yeah, apart from that, like what, I mean, other than that, we, uh, so one is providing uh, community support, mm-hmm. right? That's one way we involve. And the second thing is, uh, you know, one of the, see, end of the day, we're doing this because we want to create more riding. Correct. For me, at least as Rohan, like, uh, I'm not really, like, selling bicycles doesn't interest me, mm-hmm. right? It's exciting because of what happens. Yeah. Uh, but again, what we realized was people buy bikes, but they're not riding as much, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and the drip off to Breves and, uh, you know, races is very small yeah you know but a lot more people buying bikes so one of the things that we've been working on is trying to see how we can get people to ride more mm. so last year before the pandemic we had actually set up this ride read program again com- completely volunteer driven right mm-hmm. where we had uh we had ride leads at i think we had five points in the city at that point mm-hmm. where we ran training for the ride leads like we taught them photography we taught them bike mechanics we taught them a little bit of marketing mm-hmm. we taught them a little bit of product Mm-hmm. Right, and their idea was like ride every weekend, mm-hmm. once a week, yeah. uh, maybe once a month or twice a month, mm-hmm. and but just ride from that point and be regular. Yeah, and our idea was like, okay, there's a point near XYZ location, you can just rock up with your bike at 6 30 and you can have a 50 kilometer ride. Yeah, so the thinking was, uh, you know, more and more riding that happens in the city, and if you can influence that, I think riding will just go to next level, absolutely. Right, okay. so we did that for quite some time before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Now we're back to doing only Sunday rides outside the bike shop, mm-hmm. so we do that quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so the uh, with the ride leads and the uh, ride uh, uh, 
those rides right the yeah. idea is fantastic right because we have i mean i i uh, make sure that there are at least two uh, regular rides one yeah. one uh, uh, from hd mall every saturday to nandi yeah. and one uh, from uh, decathlon uh, 6:30 from uh, to towards kolar and awesome. you know, yeah. around that but the thing thing with these is uh, mostly no newbies show up yeah and even if uh, you know new riders show up uh, not enough people to kind of uh, you know uh, herald them and you know take care of them yeah. right uh, one is riding at 36 km yeah. and one is riding at uh, 16 km bh is yeah. not going to work right but um, in uh, i i wanted to do like kind of uh, different pace pace groups yeah but never got got around to doing that yeah. you know i i had to get there uh, with that <laughs> but uh, you know have, having a ride a shop ride or even a ride uh, where people can you know new people yeah. new bees who have started cycling this this month or couple yeah. of months or three months or whatever even a couple of years but not riding that much correct can show up and you know riding company the social aspect of riding is huge huge right? absolutely you have it what for, um, maybe some fun of riding solo but riding in group yeah. is a lot more fun 100% 100% so that that i think uh, you know once the pandemic thing uh, you know settles i think you should pick it up Hopefully. again i think it was a great project see yeah. the, you know the primary thing you know it's quite funny right like yeah. if you look at cycling in bangalore yeah. and you look at uh, people who are kind of doing stuff yeah right it's the same people same people freaking hell man <laughs> like get out of those positions yeah right so for me the whole thing was like but why are there no leaders coming in like yeah. to take the next level right yeah. like for me the rally program was to do that yeah right can i get like people and you know can they become leaders and they create more rides correct create 50 more races man i don't yeah. care yeah. yeah create 50 more rides i don't care yeah. create 50 more clubs create 50 more bike shops i don't care absolutely right? but the thing is like unless this happens right yeah. cycling won't grow yeah right more people have to come up and you know lead the race yeah. more be- more teams have to come up absolutely yeah. absolutely you know then the kind of uh, you know activity yeah. that you would see now people call uh, bangalore as a cycling capital of uh, india but wait and see when more of these yeah. things happen right? it will be fantastic fantastic i mean yeah. I think that's when the fun begins, right? Yeah, yeah. Now it's it's too small. Like it needs yeah. to be much. It can be so much bigger, yes. especially a place like Bangalore. Like I don't know about other cities, yeah. but Bangalore has like a ten x potential, you know. Yeah, yeah. So what does it take to make that happen? Is something for me is the biggest, uh, you know, yeah. uh, problem to solve, you know. Sure, sure. So yeah, I think that that is a great idea, and you should run it so. once. Uh, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> so now, now the uh, you. guys are also running uh, you know online uh, races uh, regularly i think uh, du- uh, i mean during pandemic yeah. we started uh, virtual uh, yeah. rides on wave and talk about the sunday rides how how do they typically uh, so we do uh, right now we're doing two kinds of rides one is zwift which is twice a week and then sunday rides mm-hmm. um again actually it's interesting our sunday ride focus is to push people into your group yeah uh-huh. Right. right and from your group they jump into bbc channel right. you know so right. our whole thing is like like and that's happened like abiram started join you guys yeah. so you know uh, the whole thing for us for a sunday ride is yeah quite a bit of trickle yeah yeah so yeah. our goal was to send them to the saturday yeah. group yeah you know and we want to train our riders to think money like that money used to come from correct money, money used to come money used to come to bots yeah. rides and yep. then he came correct to, yeah right yeah. so because we figured that people can't enter bbc yeah it's no longer you know people are when like i don't know if you know this right but if somebody walks into bbc yes now everyone's in groups everyone's talking yeah. you feel like a little bit like an outsider outsider right? Yeah. right so because and people are like in freaking skin suits and training and you know you feel intimidated right yes yes so uh, we were like okay so how do we handle this right so so the sunday ride was to solve that um we tried that whole beginner ride coffee ride and we realized like man we are just not interested in riding at that level very difficult to ride at 5 km per hour or yeah. 10 km per hour yeah. so we want to do a good job of it yeah. so we said okay let's not address that yeah. but let's find all these guys who bought like road bikes and fitness bikes mm-hmm. and get them to do a 50 km ride yeah right and that's a good audience to push them into you know your rides or push them into bbch push them into breves yeah. so that was our focus of the sunday ride yeah. we were very clear that you know we're not going to kind of babysit the guys who have just started because we can't do it yeah 
right i mean our right leads bond out doing that mm-hmm. and you know you need to have a correct mindset for it correct, correct. we couldn't find it so we said okay we'll take this lot mm-hmm. uh, and our goal is to grow bbc mm-hmm. to grow the racing scene to grow the breve scene you know yeah. so that's the goal that we started out with yeah uh and it's worked i mean people come here they end up riding there we see them there when you're doing start line support right. so it's great yeah, yeah, yeah you have the full circle there <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. right so how do you uh see bots in the next see you have seen now the last 14 15 yeah. years of cycling right yeah what what are the things that change over a period of time uh mm. from then to till now uh you know for me uh, you know as a someone who is uh, you know at the receiving end uh, or you know availability is a big thing right yeah uh, you talk about uh, having to solve uh, go to uh, uh, sp road and like shoulder yeah. uh, tail light yeah how <laughs> so we can find 100 varieties of tail yeah. lights right in one bike shop in one bike shop yeah it's crazy <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so that is one thing what 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 else did you so i think uh, product i mean quite a few has changed mm-hmm. a lot has not changed a lot has changed right mm-hmm. i mean i thought in 14 years a lot more people will be riding bikes but it's not been the case mm-hmm. right i'm actually not super stoked about how big the curve has been right mm-hmm. um but i think a lot of things have changed a lot more events are there mm-hmm. lot more people uh, riding as a sport yeah. uh per lot more product available in the country right now yeah. right i mean uh, forget the pandemic time but just generally like you know everything's available right you know it's amazing what all is available right now which just wasn't there like 5 years back you know yeah. uh, spares available product is available accessories available uh, if you want to hit a certain kind of uh, international event you can get the product coming into you yeah. uh, we have mechanics who can handle product at that level because mm-hmm. again with bicycles you need to be able to handle the mechanics part right. of it right? right we have mechanics in the country who can handle it at that level so in that way all those are good things more events more riding more product people who want to really push hard have the capability of doing that right, right. so all that has has changed substantially uh, but not as many people riding as i thought it would be in 10 years time mm-hmm. you know i'm still waiting for that uh, you know the cycling industry across southeast asia all spoke for the same thing yeah. the industry goes like this and then there's a hockey hockey curve okay hockey stick curve sorry okay right uh, i've not seen that in india yet okay right so i'm still waiting for that hockey stick hockey all stick. of them have said the same thing okay i've spoken to so many bike shops and you know and all of them like the industry is like this and then goes like up okay right so let's see when that happens in india <laughs> yeah yeah i think you know the availability is a big big uh, thing and then events are a big uh, part yeah because i think the, for for any working athlete right uh for any person who is picking up you know working on 9 to 5 and then picking up a uh, uh activity yeah. uh, even not even as a sport uh, not not even thinking himself as an athlete or anything like that but picking up a bike and uh, trying to uh, you know ride these events become super important yeah right? that's true super motivating yeah. you know it be bbc it be, be, be yeah. it, uh, tour of nilgiris or you know all these events become something that they aspire to yeah. uh, be part of and then th- that's uh, that's something that keeps them uh, at the at it yeah 100% right so yeah. and uh, while they are at it it is super important that they get all the things that they need yeah so that that's i think uh, that's where uh, you guys do a fantastic job oh, thank you uh, <laughs> uh, yeah i mean like uh, i can't imagine myself uh, uh, like in back in 2008 uh, where nothing is yeah. uh, nothing was there nothing was there i mean it's crazy yeah it's crazy how bad it was like i don't know how many friends we have begged to bring in tools you know like yeah. people bought spokes people bought a work stand i mean it's crazy right everyone coming from us okay can you get me on spanner on pop pull this one pop pull that one pop pull work bench yes it's crazy yeah. but all that right now it's like you just go online you get it and it ships you know it's yeah. been very good yeah. no it's i mean um you know the industry is still very disorganized yeah. uh, because the business is not big right mm-hmm. um but i think that's been the focus from the business side for us okay you know as, as so what's the business right we are in the business of putting people on bikes right right uh, and uh, at a company level as a brand level we are in the business of making sure people are riding mm-hmm. right um, so we're not here just selling product but product is very important because it what 
you know gives you that experience right yeah. so we spend a lot of time on that so our entire team is set up to make sure that we have access to the inventory mm-hmm. uh, where uh, you know people across the country have access to it through the website people in bangalore have access to it through the bike shop mm-hmm. so we've been working really hard at it okay. uh, so it's good yeah so the uh, online store right yeah. so n- now you are one store yeah uh, in bangalore why should only bangalorans uh, have yeah. all the fun yeah <laughs> right? absolutely yeah. absolutely okay. and and online is is an interesting channel right like i mean it's not an easy channel right uh, it's not just the website right like the website is easy thing is the things behind it yeah. so that's what differentiates us you think of it like a bike shop right. you know think of it like a website right you know so uh, when we look at it and our team looks at it it's like yeah you have a web presence it's like a you know store front end hmm. but behind it it's still you know mechanics working on your bikes it's still people who love this working on the product right so it's really great i mean uh, you know uh, we make sure that the correct product is stocked mm-hmm. so it's nice i mean it's really exciting like for me my entire day is filled with uh, uh, you know either holding touching talking to people uh, or product like you know working with product talking to vendors it's really exciting yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> great 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 so <clears throat> how do you see the next 5 10 years uh, you know where do you see bots and where do you see cycling in india Yeah. so cycling i mean like i said like i mean uh, i i see it accelerating right i mean i see uh, you know that hockey hockey i don't know <laughs> i'm waiting for it <laughs> but i definitely see it accelerating yeah. right i mean i see it accelerating both as a business and in terms of what i hear mm-hmm. uh, more people riding bikes mm-hmm. uh, and with the pandemic i mean I, it's been like great for the biking industry because so many more people on bikes right, right. so overall i think uh, and i think india a uh, lot more people are becoming more fitness conscious yeah cycling is a great way to stay fit yeah uh, you don't need a coach you don't need like a teammate you can ride by yourself you can ride in the team whatever you can do whatever you want right okay. so i think it's a very versatile tool and i think uh, india is taking to it now mm-hmm. uh, price also which is a huge deal now is not as much of a big like sometimes in shops somebody comes and buys a 40k bike how do you buy that that's the first bike i mean i thought so much about my first bike yeah. you know Uh, but it's good you know mm-hmm. people don't have to go 5 years to understand what a good bike means they immediately buying it and they doing the first 100 km ride right you know so uh, i mean i think i see all that is very good indicators for the cycling industry okay. uh sport like running is growing huge triathlon is growing huge we are seeing a lot of coaches you know in the country yeah. uh people are serious about their rides uh, sometimes when people are buying they have very clear questions on fitness right so uh, all these are very good indicators uh, i hope we see that hockey stick with this yeah um yeah so i'm i'm thinking is definitely going to grow but i don't know how much yeah you know could just got to wait and see uh, for bots i mean uh, our primary focus is online right now versus mm-hmm. offline we're going to run one bike shop okay. uh, do a great job of that and not really grow beyond that right now but we're really interested in seeing like as a you know a website how do we talk to cyclists across the country mm-hmm. you know can that presence be much bigger by doing that you know okay so we're really excited about that right now right right so uh, talking about uh, you know pandemic uh, you know ha- having a silver lining yeah i think a uh, lot more pe- you, i mean i at least i see lot more people yeah. on the bikes 100%. on the roads yeah right and um, i remember uh, you know someone telling that there was a line outside box <laughs> line oh. outside a bike store i know two by bikes yeah I thought I would never see such a day. Absolutely. And I I got to hear that. Absolutely. And you got to see that. How was I was in here. Oh, no. I was in here. Oh, they told me about it. I mean, I I saw the lines like okay, so that day was crazy. Like uh, I had supper for lunch or whatever and came back and they like you missed it. There were 10 people like 10 bunches waiting to come into the bike shop and buy bikes. And the sales guys on the road telling them about <laughs> bikes because we didn't want to meet people inside, right. right? I mean, I wasn't here. I saw when they were like Two, three people, and I have pictures of that. But I don't have them on the road, you know. It's yeah. like what a moment, man! <laughs> what a moment to miss. But yeah, so I mean, the pandemic. Um, I mean, it basically wiped out the inventory in the country, right? right like right, I mean, right. India as a country had a lot of inventory which hadn't moved, and the pandemic just wiped out. Even for yeah. us, right? Yeah. Um, business almost four x of normal, you know, of a normal month. Yeah. So which is huge, right? Yeah. But um, but I think it was very tricky also for the business because. you're running it in a pandemic yeah right and uh, you know we a lot of learning for us yeah. uh, online just blew up for us like i mean yeah. it, it just blew up like there's so much of traffic so many sales like stuff was out of stock mm-hmm. it was extremely messy i mean uh, two months was great yeah uh, 
uh and i was basically like frontlining customer support which is great yeah. uh it made us really stretch in terms of a business you know mm-hmm. um, a lot of unhappy people yeah. but we learned to handle that a lot of ha- unhappy people because uh, of the in- lack of inventory yeah stuff was sold out by the time you know yeah. their order was processed was sold out right you know and because of the entire disorganized structure right it was impossible to run this any different mm-hmm. you know so online especially yeah offline was unhappy because there was no product it was like right. they're seeing bikes but hey yeah. these bikes are all sold yeah, yeah you can't get any of this yeah right? and and uh, initial initially it was difficult to get stuff out to the customer as well yeah. right uh, because there was no one uh, you know uh, no shipping uh, yeah. companies working yeah. properly uh, just when the pandemic yeah you know, this entire the red green yeah. you know that system there yeah. yeah i mean the first few months was crazy crazy like it's like it's like right now it doesn't feel like that yeah. but the first few months is just real i mean it was you know like yeah, it was just crazy like you know in the bike shop also how do you be safe yeah you know uh, yeah i was just trying to run the business itself was very interesting at that point yeah i i i see what you mean because i saw a few uh, you know customers uh, talking about it on yeah and, you're seeing a lot of it yeah yeah i mean like <laughs> uh, no i know bots i know rohan this is not something that yeah, happened there uh, but then it was happening and you you chipped in and uh, talked about it what yeah. the challenges and try uh, try to uh, you know correct them yeah. and all that but yeah i i know what you mean with the kind of challenges it uh, pandemic uh, you know brought about a great thing that lot more uh, people are yeah. on the bikes uh, hopefully once is, this is all through uh, uh, fingers crossed that most of them stay stay, stay stay on the yeah. bikes and you know continue right yeah yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. no I, lo- i mean the interesting thing was a lot of people are looking at biking yeah. but a lot of people who had bikes were bringing their friends and family into the which didn't happen normally correct there's no push to you know bring your friends and family into cycling but suddenly there was a push i don't know what changed to make that push mm-hmm. right uh, so it was great like all our old customers were getting so many people into biking you know correct so and it didn't matter like they were not picky uh, they didn't take weeks to decide right. they just got a bike and they started riding yeah you yeah. know so it was fantastic uh, i think uh, you know uh, lack of commute uh, i mean work commute, work commute yeah uh, because a lot of people will have working from home yeah uh, that means that there is no commute there is no two hours uh, to go to work two hours to come back from yeah. work and you know right. that that four hours what what do you do with yeah. it i think the uh, people right, are right. trying to uh, you know use that time yeah. and hopefully once the commute comes back use those bikes to come here to work yeah. that would be great yeah that's right. great i mean a lot of people in bangalore i know have bought bike, across the country yeah. have bought bikes so you know uh, yeah. i'm really hoping that you know they all ride over the next year you know that would be great yeah, yeah. great so it's been fantastic uh, talking uh, rohan so let us kind of conclude with uh, you are a working at led in, in a sense and you started as one and you enable a lot of working at leds uh, with that uh, kind of job you do uh, so now let's kind of uh, end this with uh, some tips from you for working at leds to manage mm-hmm. work uh work and sport and family and oh man i don't think i do a great job of it shout out to my wife <laughs> <laughs> i mean I, i think it's uh it's very important yeah. right like i mean uh you have work you have your passion uh you have family you know uh, whatever you have a bunch of commitments right if it, yeah. if it, if not married you know yeah. you have a bunch of commitments um for me the biggest thing is you know i i think you need to be very passionate about what you do and really enjoy what you do yeah right and and do a great job at whatever it is just not big or small but you know you feel like you're doing a great job of it right uh and yeah i mean i i think like as long as you know uh, as long as you can really give time to everything i think that's super important mm-hmm. right because end of the day like you know uh, it can't be just about your passion it can't yeah. be just about your family it has yeah. to be everything yeah right and you have to give yourself also that time you know yeah. so that's something that i'm learning something that i've learned over the years mm-hmm. right uh, to balance everything uh, to do stuff that you really enjoy yeah. uh, you know to do more of the stuff that you really enjoy life is short like 
Yeah. You got to you got to push it. Yeah, yeah. You can't chill and relax. Life is too short to really do that, right? So yeah. I think like uh, if there's a passion, go out for it. Yeah. Uh, make sure it's balanced so that your other important things in life don't get you know sidelined. What are the things that you do to to kind of ensure that balance? To ensure balance. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I you know. So there's a lot of moving paths over the last few years for me, right? Like I mean, like earlier it was like whatever BBC, this thing, that thing, this thing, that thing, and then over the years that shifted to like okay, the business, then multiple parts of the business. Um, so for me, I think uh, one of the things that I've done is uh, I've started getting better at planning. Mm-hmm. Like I consciously try and like how the hell does uh, Elon Musk uh, take people to Mars, mm-hmm. run a freaking electronic whatever and, TV, and really, yeah. do a boring? I mean, how do you do all this? Yeah. right yeah. and still say you have a family life right right i mean there has to be a way that people are doing this right so for me that's been the journey the last few years like trying to understand like the so called successful people right not the success that's fine yeah how do they do it what's the yeah. thinking what's the mental models what are they what are, how do they structure their day is yeah. there something there that i can learn from yeah. right so i've been doing a lot of that mm-hmm. uh, so for me that comes to very simple uh, you know uh, how i manage my day how i make sure that i give time where it's required mm-hmm. uh you're not successful always yeah right but i mean it's okay but you do your best to be successful so i've i've spent a lot of time on that so i read a lot of books on that mm-hmm. uh try and follow people who are successful just trying to see what's happening there right yeah i listen to a lot of podcasts yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what what uh, may, maybe share one or two books that help you in that area uh oh there's so many man there's so many uh like right now uh, i'm flipping through uh uh what's the name of the book the titan uh titan of giants so uh i'll send you the link i mean it's basically like this guy uh he's kind of uh uh you know uh, picked up tips from like some 100 different successful tools of titan tools of titans right okay. bad to tools of titans you know you can't read the entire book end to end yeah, right yeah, but yeah. you flip up one like okay there's some interesting insight that comes from this right? right again it doesn't mean that it needs to translate exactly to what i do yeah. but okay this is an interesting thinking here Okay. you know so for me that's the interesting bit okay um yeah so awesome awesome yeah awesome. great uh, rohan it's been a fantastic uh, uh, time chatting with you about your journey the journey of bots it it also uh, touched a lot of history bangalore cycling <laughs> yeah. bangalore cycling history itself and uh, it was fantastic uh, time chatting uh, great it was it was awesome sharing all this <laughs> yes yes for um, you folks uh, listening to this uh, please subscribe to the channel uh, uh, on the youtube or at whatever podcasting platform that uh, you get your podcast from and uh, check out bumps on the saddle uh, is a great place if you are a bangalorean uh, i am sure you must be living under a rock if you don't know the place <laughs> but um, if you are elsewhere uh, the online store is great uh, you can uh, check it out what is the link uh, it's just bumps on the saddle.com bumps on the saddle.com thanks sir rohan this is great if you're not riding a bike make sure you're riding a bike <laughs> yes <laughs>